Do you remember this sound? If that sound rings a bell to you, then you know where we're heading in today's episode of Sports Moments. That's right, the 2010 FIFA World Cup hosted in South Africa. Now, I have to admit one thing. Hold on, let me turn those vuvuzelas off. There. That's better. Now, I have to admit one thing. I am not at all a big soccer fan. I still have no idea for what qualifies for offside. If anyone would like to tell me, please feel free to comment below. But anyways, I do every four years, I very much enjoy seeing the world come together and watching the World Cup. One of the best memories I have of the World Cup was in 2010. I had just finished middle school and I was ready for a great summer of sports. In today's episode, we're going to talk about a game that aggravated me, even though I wasn't a fan of the team that lost. This is the game, this game that I'm talking about is the quarterfinals match in the knockout round between Ghana and Uruguay. This game started with excitement, but it ended with heartache and controversy. In this World Cup, there were six teams representing the continent of Africa, but out of all six of those teams, only Ghana would advance to the knockout stage. Since Ghana was Africa's only representative in the knockout stage, Everyone who was supporting a team that had already been knocked out was rooting for Ghana. Ghana finished second in Group D as they finished with a record of one win, one draw, and one loss. In the round of 16, they would add another page in the book of United States men's national soccer embarrassment by defeating them 2-1 to one in additional extra time. As for Uruguay, they would finish at the top of Group A with a record of two wins, one draw, and zero losses. They would edge out South Korea 2-1 to one in the round of 16 to advance to the quarterfinals. July 2nd, 2010, in FBN Stadium, also known as Soccer City, located in Johannesburg in front of a sellout crowd of 84,017. All of Africa was tuned in to watch Ghana try to continue their quest to win the World Cup in their home continent. The first 45 minutes went by and it was filled with great stops and close calls, but nothing was doing until adage time. be dealt with there by the captain Mensa up to Asamoah Jan. This is Sully Montari. 15 seconds remain before the break and Montari shoots! Oh and Montari scores! What a way to finish the first half! Ghana are in front in this quarter-final. Could it be? Could the fairy tale come true? Might, just might, they make it to the last four. Ghana lead Uruguay by one goal to nil. I mean, he just picks the ball up here, nobody closes him down, gets his foot around the ball, great strike. Now that's a stadium erupting if I ever heard one. So it was now one to nothing in favor of Ghana, or one nil if we're going to speak in soccer terms here. But just ten minutes into the second half, this would happen. Fusile, up against Pantsil. Oh, oh. they just got caught there, that's a free kick. Yeah, foul there by the uh, Fulham right back. Get the feeling that Diego Forlan will be licking his lips at this prospect here now. Certainly could go for goal here. It's Diego Forlan now for Uruguay, and Diego Forlan equalises with a stunner! A world-class free kick from a world-class player. 
Norwich 1-1. One, one. Richard Kings has got the wall covering his right-hand side of the goal. He's got the left-hand side of the goal. I think he gets a really good look at it. He moves once again to his right. Why is he moving? The wall's there for that. Just if he stands still, that's exactly where he would have been. One of the very few people in this tournament who can get that ball up and down. Diego Forlan. But for me, I think the goalkeeper should have had it. Now, I guess that's one way to bend it like Beckham. Anyways, the game was now at one all, and this game was turning into a barn burner, by soccer standards anyways, but after 90 plus minutes, this game was heading into overtime. Yeah, I'm just gonna call it that now. In overtime, things were still tight, but in the final seconds, this would happen. John Panchel for Ghana with what in all likelihood will be the last kick of the match. Here we go. Barteng's there. Keeper's lost it. Appy is there. Blocked on the line. Blocked on the line again. Has it gone in? Flag goes up. And the officials are going to have to step in here. Well, it's a red card. It's been blocked on the line. Does this mean Ghana have got a penalty with the last kick of the game? Oh, I do not believe it. Oh, cross comes in, he's flicked on by Kevin Prince Botang. I think John Mensah's there in, in there. Appy has the shot, it's blocked. I think it's this one here that goes on to the handball. Absolutely right. The assistant and the referee got it spot on. It didn't cross the line, but it's a clear handball. Now here's what aggravated me. We all know that everybody and their brother plays soccer when they're little kids. And what is the first thing we learn? Don't use your hands! Well, unless you're the goalie, of course. But as you can see here, Luis Suarez clearly used his hand, and he, of course, is not the goalie. But he was given a red card, and Ghana was given a penalty kick. And penalty kicks are almost always automatic goals, right? What a moment for Asamoah Jan, what pressure on those shoulders. Suarez leaves the field in tears. Asamoah Jan for Ghana, oh and he's missed! Oh I cannot believe it! And it was the last kick of the game! And Asamoah Jan cannot finish Uruguay off! It's 1-1 and we are headed for penalty kicks. Emphasis on the almost always part. But nevertheless, it was going to be penalty kicks that would decide who goes to the semi-finals. And let me show you how those went real quickly. Forlan against Kingston, and that is a good penalty. Here in the penalty shootout, and he has for Uruguay. And it's 2-1. <laughs> Up here for Ghana. 2-2. Good penalty. On as a substitute. Oh, and he just managed to get that past Richard Kingston. Up here. Oh, it was an easy save. Muslera with the save. Mensa. Pereira, the right back. Oh, he blasted over the top. Dominic Adia for Ghana. Oh, and Muslera's there again. Abreu for Uruguay. And what a finish. What a cool, calm finish from Sebastian Abreu. Ghana are on the floor. Africa's last representatives at this World Cup are going home. And Uruguay are back in the big time on the global stage of world football. They're through to the semi-finals. As you can see, Uruguay had won the penalty kicks 4-2. And it was over for Ghana. And the dream run to win the World Cup in Africa would end. And Luis Suarez who seemed like he had cost his team, turned out to be the hero, in a way. So now it's time for me to say, so what happened next? Well, Ghana was out, which meant no African team was winning the World Cup in South Africa. As for Uruguay, they would lose a tight one to the Netherlands, 3-2, and would lose the third place match by the same exact score to Germany. I feel that it served them right, 
since they only won against Ghana on a handball. If it were up to me, I would have counted that as a goal, since it was going to go in anyways had it not been for the handball. I remember watching the third place match and hearing the crowd booing every time Luis Suarez had the ball. And I know that he's considered to be one of the most hated players in the world. Well, here's to another episode of Sports Moments. I've created a playlist of all my previous episodes. That way you can binge watch my show anytime you want. Comment below or email me if you have any idea for a moment that you want me to talk about. And follow me on Facebook. I'll leave a link in the description. And I'll see you in the next moment. Oh, come on!